This is the Energy Makers Show, featuring the innovators, financers, and policymakers focused on the global energy demand. Brought to you by NRG, moving clean energy forward. And here's your host, Russ Capper. Hi, I'm Russ Capper, and welcome to episode number 108 of the Energy Makers Show. Today, first up, Hank Yelsma, founder and president of Radial Drilling Services. The company focused on advanced well optimization technology and actually offering an alternative to standard hydraulic fracturing. Then up next, Brian Marcotte, President and CEO of Titan Oil Recovery Inc., the company that uses a twist on something that has been around for quite some time, a new way of managing the ecology of an oil reservoir to produce more oil in his way actually emulates the way koalas digest eucalyptus leaves. All of that right after this. At BKD, we understand the constantly shifting nature of the energy industry. As a national CPA and advisory firm, we serve energy clients from the beginning to the end of the cycle. Our experienced energy advisors serve approximately 300 energy companies in exploration, midstream, downstream, oil field services, and power production. Plus, we're the largest North American member of the Praxity Global Alliance, which means we can help you wherever you operate. Contact a BKD advisor or visit us online to learn more. This is the Energy Maker Show, brought to you by NRG, moving clean energy forward. And now, back to the Energy Maker Show with your host, Russ Capper. Welcome back to the Energy Maker Show. My guest now is Hank Yelsma, founder and president of Radial Drilling Services. Hank, welcome to the Energy Maker Show. Russ, good to be here. Great. Well, tell us about Radial Drilling Services. Well, radial drilling is a method that uses high pressure to penetrate the formation, but it is a very low volume of high pressure. And by penetrating, we create drainage channels into the formation about 300 feet long in each direction or in any desired direction. By doing so, we create a drainage grid that basically drains the oil, gas, or coal bed methane, or even shale gas and oil into the main well bore and produces it. There is no use of high pressure actually into the formation. The high pressure is contained within the system. So therefore, there is no pressure exerted to the formation as you do with frac. On the other side too, we use very low volumes. We use volumes from four to five gallons per minute. And an operation can take anywhere between 20 and 40 minutes. So you can calculate exactly how much fluid that you use. The fluids we're using are basically chemical free, except for in, in some cases some acids, but the acid is chemically spent when we use it and the formation uses the acid, therefore the acid is neutralized and therefore does not pose any surface nor downhole environmental problems. All right, so do you actually go in and drill the well and then do your process? No, we do not drill the well, we go into existing wells. Okay. So, so do you actually follow sometimes where there has been standard hydraulic fracturing? Uh, yes, okay. we, we have followed up on frack wells. We have also done pre-work and then fracking was used after that through our system. Okay, now at the very beginning of the description, you, you talked about pressure, but later on you said, but it's not pressure into the formation. Help me understand that okay. a little bit more. We use anywhere between 15 and sometimes even 20,000 PSI of pressure, but that pressure is contained inside the system. When it leaves, leaves the jet, which actually penetrates information, it's sort of like a bullet leaving a gun barrel. Okay. After it's out of the gun barrel, it loses its power related to the power put behind it. This is the same thing. So therefore, there is no pressure exerted on the formation except erosional pressure similar to a water hose in your yard mm -hmm. that you put into the ground. Okay, Hank. Now, my non-engineering understanding of hydraulic fracturing is that you perforate the well bore with all of this liquid to, to cause the shale production to pool and come out. What's the difference in your system? Okay, in hydraulic fracturing, the well is perforated. Through these perforations, the frac company applies a tremendous amount of pressure and fluid to penetrate the formation. Mm -hmm. Now, pressure is an interesting thing. Pressure moves in all directions equal, unless there is a weaker spot. In the formation, there's fissures, mi mm -hmm. microfractures. That fluid may go in there. Now, that fluid may be perpendicular, but it may also go up and down, which is dangerous. Mm -hmm. And we all know that. Mm -hmm. Now, compared to hydraulic fracking, which is done with 3 million gallons of water and pressures and so forth and so forth right. and problems, 
What we do, we simply drill or jet, hydraulically jet, a small hole through the casing into the formation about 300 feet long. That becomes a drainage channel. It intersects these microfractures as well, as, as fracking does. But we don't need propens to keep this open. By frac, frac will eventually heal and close back up. Whereas this remains open. It's sort of like drilling a hole in the wall with okay. a hand drill. There is no pressure involved that actually forces the formation apart. That is the big difference. The second big difference is that our system uses only about four gallons of fluid per minute. So for a whole operation like this, multilaterals in all directions will use maybe 10,000 gallons of water at the end of the day, which is, which is one thirtieth of what a frac would use. Okay. Uh, that's the big difference. Okay. So you actually call this system radial drilling? Yes. Okay. It's a slight misnomer. Okay. Since we're not really drilling, drilling we're right. eroding the formation, okay. similar to a hose pipe into the yard we do with the sand. Right. And uh, drilling came up at the very beginning, since we are in the drilling industry, we're in the oil industry. Right. So any other name than drilling would be possibly confusing, but as it turns out, drilling is slightly confusing. Now, I can understand how uh, it would be advantageous over standard hydraulic fracturing, just from the standpoint of nothing else, of using less liquid. Mm -hmm. Uh, but how does it compare in production? Well, we have done extensive uh, uh, research on it, mm -hmm. and together with some oil companies, uh, specifically in Russia and some other areas, mm -hmm. uh, France, for instance, um, the results are very similar. The, uh, the long-term results are also similar. In other words, the, the production drop-off, of course, depending on other formation factors, uh, lasts similar to what uh, a frac does. Um, with, of course, far less surface and downhole uh, necessities. Okay. Now, I've sort of followed you enough to know that you've done this quite a bit internationally, but not so much yet in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Well, for one thing, the, the uh, international access is easier for us. Contracts are smaller. Mm -hmm. The companies are more willing to venture into the unknown. Whereas in the U.S. you have a traditional oil field, and tradition is nice, but tradition sometimes stops mm -hmm. the evolution of new technology, and, and the drilling industry in general is pretty traditional. Okay. Now, do you plan uh, to try to get much more active in, in the U.S. production these days? Yes, we are. We, uh, uh, of course, uh, the regulations in the United States have are a little bit more stringent than in some other areas. Right. Um, for instance, we started in Russia for the very simple reason. It's easy to work in Russia. I have worked quite a lot in Russia before, uh, lots of connections and so forth and so forth. So obviously the, the starting point in Russia was, was a natural for us. Okay. All right. Very interesting. So um, it seems like, though, in the U.S., the regulations would be in your favor. I mean, there's so much concern right now about what we're putting down hole, and, and your system puts down less. It seems like you'd be favorably received. It's, it's, yes, you would think so. Right. Um, the regulators would love us. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure that the users would love us because they would have to change what they're doing today. Okay. And I think that's where the shoe hurts. Well, I, absolutely. Change is slow in this process. Okay. Well, very interesting. Hank, well, Hank what's your background? What did you do before uh, radial drilling services? I started as a geologist okay. and went into technology and developed a group of patents uh, originally, the patents were for horizontal drilling, uh, which are now used in the industry. And uh, then I went through my dream to be able to drill a well coming out of, a, uh, out of a, an existing well, but perpendicular, not with a curve build up like you do with, radio, with horizontal right. drilling. But I worked for a, a company called Global Natural Resources as uh, their vice president for Russian operations. That company was taken over by Seagull, then by, ended up with Ocean Energy, and ultimately ended up being Devon, Devon Energy. Okay. I left that company and went to a Canadian company called Orado, and we uh, bought 6,000 square kilometers of virgin land in Kazakhstan. Run seismic, did test drilling, put it on production, and sold it. All right, good. And, and so what motivated you to really bring uh, radial drilling services to the U.S.? Then? Well, it's, it's, if you work for companies, whatever you do belongs to the company. Right. And it's sort of like limiting you in your, in your ability to develop things because it's never yours. Right. So I decided what I can do for the big boys, I can probably do well for myself. And the idea has been there for a long time. But I found out that 
obviously there's a lot of resistance inside companies of, for you doing other than what your job is. Um, so I decided to do it for myself and it, it's proven pretty interesting. Okay, and your roots are in the Netherlands, right? They are in the Netherlands. Well, Hank, I really appreciate you uh, sharing your story with us. Well, thank you very much. You bet. That's Hank Yelsma, the founder and president of Radial Drilling Services. We'll be back with more right after this. This is the Energy Maker Show, brought to you by NRG, moving clean energy forward. And now, back to the Energy Maker Show. Welcome back to the Energy Maker Show. I'm Brandy Avinsev, and my guest now is Brian Marcotte of Titan Oil Recovery. Thank you so much for being here today, Brian. Brandy, it's great to be with you today. Okay, so today we're going to talk about koala bears, and we're going to talk about bugs, and we're going to talk about how that's going to change the landscape of the oil and gas industry. Tell us a little bit more. That's a great cross-section of questions you (laughs) just asked. We have, first of all, let me say, a technology uh, that is a twist on something that has been around for, for quite some time, but it's a new way of managing the ecology of an oil reservoir to produce more oil, meaning greater rate and higher ultimate recovery. Now, the koala part is not so straightforward. Uh-huh. The koala part is that this technology started with a thought process of how koalas actually digest eucalyptus leaves for their means of uh, sustenance. Eucalyptus oils are very toxic Mm -hmm. and because of that they need to be broken down so they can be used by the koala. Mm -hmm. It is microbes that are in the gut of the koala that allows that to happen. Mm -hmm. This technology develop from that to see how microbes could be used to interact with oil in oil reservoirs. Wow, that's so fascinating. So tell me about some of the results that you've gotten. It's been quite quite amazing. We have treated uh, more than 300 wells uh, in various oil fields around the world and we are averaging right now about a hundred percent improvement in the producing wells that we treat. Okay, so enhanced oil recovery or EOR, it's a big buzzword in the industry now. Now, you all are doing something very different. Can you explain kind of the the nuance and the difference between what you're doing and what some of the other technologies are doing? Yeah, that's a great subject because what we do is we actually access living organisms that are naturally occurring in an oil reservoir. We don't actually put any microbes into the reservoir. This was some of the old technique that really didn't work very well. Mm -hmm. By accessing microbes that are naturally in the reservoir, Mm -hmm. they have already adapted to the environment. So Mm -hmm. what we need to do is provide nutrient material Mm -hmm. that acts like a catalyst Mm -hmm. to start their metabolism going where they can change chemically and interact with the oil and actually release oil that would otherwise be trapped in the oil reservoir. So you're essentially feeding the ecosystem down there to actually break some barriers and move the oil throughout the reservoir. That is exactly it. You got it. Wow, this is so fascinating. So what does this mean to the industry at large? Well, you know, what happens, and the the statistic that drives our business is Uh out of all of the oil fields around the world. Uh Uh-huh. Basically, only 35% of the discovered oil ever gets produced. Wow. 65% remains trapped under the ground, not because anybody's doing anything wrong, but because of the physics and the dynamics of fluid flow in Mm -hmm. the oil reservoir. When we can treat these wells, we can recover maybe as much as 10 or 15% of that trapped oil that would otherwise never be produced. And that is a huge impact. Absolutely. If you just look at the United States today, uh, over a million barrels of oil per day comes from relatively small producing wells. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If we could double that production, that would be another million barrels of oil in the mix of the domestic energy supply. Wow. That's terrific. Thank you so much, Brian. That's fascinating technology. And that wraps up my interview today with Brian Marcotte with Titan Oil Recovery. And that wraps up the episode of the Energy Makers Show, heard on the radio and seen at theenergymakers.com.